Hello and welcome to Type 1 Uncut. My name is Jason, your host, and on my left we have... Hi, my name's Tom. And on my right... Ginny, hi. So, guys, tell me something unexpected about yourselves. Um, you know you have those yearbooks um, when you finish high school, mm-hmm. um, and most people kind of get voted um, most popular or prettiest or most likely to be famous. Um, I won from the drama club um, Best in Drag. <laughs> and why were you voted Best in Drag? Uh, I'm glad you asked that, Jason. Uh, it's not because I'm I'm brilliant at cross-dressing. It's actually because I played a number of um, comedy roles um, and male comedy roles. And Tom, what about yourself? Uh, nothing as colourful, I've got to say, but if I could be reincarnated as anything, I would like it to be a duck. Well, I just think they, have, they seem to have a very simple life. You know, when you look at something and it hits you sometimes, I've many a time walked along the river and looked at ducks, of course. <laughs> If I come back as anything, it'd be one of you guys. Yeah, nothing crazy, just a duck. In today's segment, we're going to be discussing the recent advancements in research into the treatment of type 1 diabetes, both the good and the bad. Our first topic of conversation today will be the artificial pancreas. Gee whiz, that sounds interesting. (laughs) Tell us about it, Jason. The artificial pancreas is uh, research into combining both the pump and the continuous glucose monitor to make them be able to talk to each other. Currently it's an open loop system, which means that it requires input from the patient. Closed loop means that the patient will not have to do anything with the two devices, they will just simply talk to each other and do the job. So guys, what do you think about the artificial pancreas then? I think, um, personally in my opinion, it's a really great, um, a really great thing. It means that you know we can really fine tune our blood glucose levels, which at the moment is extremely difficult. You know we, you know I can try and test as, as often as I I want, or but that's still every kind of four hours. It's not every half hour, which is what this system could do. It can communicate with each other and and adjust your you know your insulin levels accordingly. So I I think that's brilliant. My worry about this system, although it's hard for me to argue against it because. It's something that's potentially life-changing, potentially yeah. does take all the work out of, out of being a diabetic and essentially almost makes you not diabetic, although mm. that's obviously not the case. But uh, something I see as a disadvantage is the dependence that we would have on the system. Yeah. What if something went wrong? Yeah. What if the, mach- the, machinery, the machinery went, went wrong mm. or uh, we became disconnected somehow? It's been a long time since we would have then had to inject uh, the dosage we, we would have used to have taken, we've become yeah. reliant on the machine to do that all for us, mm-hmm. keep, keep us in control. And it is, it is quite easy to forget the regime you used to be on taking injections. Yeah, you can still manually take an injection as a correction or whatever, mm-hmm. but, that's the, but once you become dependent on the, on the artificial pancreas system, doing that kind of thing it could be potentially dangerous, yeah. in my opinion. I, I think, yeah, the, the other thing with that, I guess, is also, you know, your my levels of insulin change, you know, um, depending on my, you know, whatever you're doing during that amount of time. So you might remember three years ago you were on this much insulin, mm. but injecting that might not be appropriate for the time now. No, absolutely. Yeah, because your body does change, doesn't it? And even down to the, what you're doing, the minute thing of what you're actually doing at that exact moment in time, stress, whatever, yeah. So, yeah, you're dead right. The worry there is taking the, almost taking the humanity out of your own care. Yeah. You're completely self-reliant on a machine to look after you. Yeah, you can turn into a cyborg. <laughs> to a cyborg. That's, yeah, that's mad. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome, though. Well, I'd love to. In a sci-fi cyborg. film, but. Yeah. In re- perhaps reality. Not, perhaps not with type one diabetes, uh, Jason. Yeah, slightly different in reality, isn't it? Um, I think uh, another another pro actually for it is that. Um, you, you're able to stay within your target range yeah. more often um, and on the long term and something that as people living with type 1 uh, we want to have our, our our sugars within the target range as often as possible to stop long-term complications mm-hmm. and this will do that for you it you know and it means that you'll be able to be stable for longer mm. well, that's the, that's kind of the what we're waiting for in it and yeah if it does that, you know, and it can be completely safeguarded yeah. to make sure nothing goes wrong. I'm yeah. in, but until then, I'm out. Right. I'm yeah. sorry. Am I sorry? Am I right in thinking that you have to have two devices on you with this? Um, not necessarily. I think the the way that it's going at the moment is to roll it into one concise machine. So whereas now we have a pump, 
yeah. than a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor. Yeah. It would be condensing it into just one device. So instead of having two, you would just have something that looks like the insulin pump with the yeah. insulin in it that's also able to read your blood sugars. Would it be as small as insulin pump? Because I don't know the idea of going around with these blocks hanging out. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll just walk Especially when I go with my, my tight t shirts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure no. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, think, I don't think, I imagine it would be uh, any larger than a pump. But even that, I mean, again, if we're saying this system is able to stop you going low and stop you going high, you're going to have to have a system that contains the insulin mm -hmm. and also contains glucagon, yeah, which will correct your hypo. So I don't understand how it can be small. Mm. It's going to yeah. be, you know, it's going to be visible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, surely. And all the other things, you know, the day-to-day -day things like showering, swimming, uh, gymnastics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, again, it's all something, it's things you need to think about, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, Everything needs to be considered. And finally, if you liked the video, please give it a massive thumbs up. It does help. And subscribe, favourite, share it around. Uh, do what you got to do. It would be nice. Paste it all over the place. Thanks, guys.